Hi everyone, Diogo Marques here. I want to cover a topic in this video that I think is really important when you are in a sales presentation, when you are dealing with people. As you know from this playlist of videos that I've been going through, this is all coming from a practical stance because I do this for a living. So I want to share some of the experiences that I have when dealing with people. If you read a lot, and you should, because you learn a lot from books, there's a really interesting book called Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. You'll see the link below in the description of this video. But one topic that you usually hear salespeople talking about is something called reciprocity. And this essentially is a really powerful concept because when you are dealing with a person, with someone else, People, as we, are, we have covered before, people see themselves, they address themselves, they talk to themselves, they don't see you there. So if they see you like them, meaning you are being reciprocal in your body language, the way that you are addressing them, it kind of natu uh, naturally lowers their, resistant le their resistance level when dealing with you because they are seeing themselves. Because otherwise they would see an impediment. They wouldn't connect with the, with the other person. They, will be not, uh, they wouldn't be connecting with themselves, essentially. But there's one, one common misconception about this. Because when you are doing a presentation, you are portraying yourself as a figure of authority. Someone that is there in order to solve a problem. And if you stay at an equal level... Uh, as the other person, meaning subconscious level, I don't mean like a uh, different level like I'm the CEO and you are the employee, not that. I mean like an equal level, like we are the same type of person, right? But you don't convey a message of a figure of authority, you won't sell anything. I'll give you an eg example how this works. Let's say you go to a meeting and the person in front of you is aggressive and creative. So it's like, yeah. Let's go, dude. That type of thing. So they have this way of being. If you are there and convey a, a body language or someone that is like, like um, getting themselves smaller and holding themselves and all that, subconsciously, they might be nice to you and all that, but they won't connect with you because they are not seeing themselves because they're like, ah, let's go, people. See, if you're like all scrugged and all that, there's a big disconnect there. So when you get there, you also be, need to be something like, ah, let's go, dude, that type of thing. And that instantly, instantly creates a connect. So when you re read about Chaldini's book regarding persuasion and being, uh, being like conveying your body language similar in a way of what they're doing, this works. What what doesn't work is that if you keep that and when you are intellectually addressing what they are saying, you keep to the same level. Because you are showing, if you do that, it's like, I like this song, and then you say, I like that song. I like golf, and you say, I like golf. You see what I mean? There must be a point that you are um, objectively disconnecting from that person, even though you are keeping yourself in the same type of body language. See what I mean? It's like just because you are having the same type of body language when dealing with the other person, it doesn't mean you have to agree with them. When you disagree, but keep yourself at the same level, this is what I was talking about earlier on, not like I have five employees, I have 5,000 because I'm better than you, not that. They are, you are the same, see? But you need to have a thoughtful disagreement, right? You're not being rude. You're not in any way are like showing like I have a Ferrari and you drive a piece of crap car. It's not that that I'm saying. What I'm saying is you keep the same body language, but you, you should make a point of having uh, disagreeable thoughts, disagreeable uh, conversations. You do not have to be agreeable. In fact, you should actually be disagreeable. Because if you keep your thoughts the way you think about them, you'll see something that is quite uh, interesting. People will start naturally gravitating towards your thoughts. I'll give you an example. 
So let's say you go to a meeting, you start doing some like small talk, right? So you have the same type of body language like we are uh, have been addressing here up, up until now. And then you're talking about, let's say, food. For some reason, you st <laughs> just start talking about food. And he says, I like meat. And, and then you say something like, I don't like meat. I eat fish. You do not have to justify yourself. You do not have to give any expl explanations. You are being disagreeable. And you should be disagreeable because you have your own points of view regarding things. And you'll notice something. If you keep to yourself and you are clearly demonstrating that you are not the bit interested in trying to kind of please people, like you're just, you are keeping your, your thoughts to your realm, to yourself, you are keeping the same body language, but the way that you perceive the world is how you perceive the world. You're not trying to justify anything to you, just saying, I don't like meat, I don't like meat, I ate fish, and that's it. You don't need to justify it. And you'll know something, you notice something different. People have this natural tendency uh, to try to be in harmony with other people. And that's just like a dysfunctional motherfucker. But usually they want to be like at, at peace with the other person. So as soon as you are showing signs of being disagree uh, disagreeable, you will immediately notice people trying to be agreeable with you. And that immediately puts you in the, the place of figure of authority. I'll give you another example. The guy says something like, I don't know, whatever the case might be, right? I talk about food. Tells, he's essentially telling you something and you say, I don't do that. I drive a car. And then you don't justify it. This is an important part. Do not justify yourself when you're having this uh, specific moment in your talks. It's like, I like blue. I don't like blue things. I like green. That's it. You'll notice that in that environment, people will start gravitating towards you because they will try to please you. And as, as soon as they try to please you, they are complying. And when they are complying, it will make it easy for you to try to do the sale because you are doing a disconnect on purpose. It's like both of you are having lunch, right? And like, you just want to have a different type of food, right? You don't need to justify yourself just because both of you are eating in the same restaurant. People do not look forward for thoughtful disagreements, and this is nuisance. It's like you go to a restaurant, both of you, and one guy says he doesn't like that restaurant, the other guy immediately tries to like, yeah, I don't like it either. It, it, this is stupid. You just, uh, I like this restaurant and I'm going there. I'll see you in a half an hour. And then you ju don't justify yourself, right? People will respect you more if you do this, especially if you are in a business meeting. You are the way you are. If people don't like him, don't like it, they could, they could like, it's a problem, right? The, the only thing that matters is you being consistent about yourself, portraying yourself as the alpha person, not being rude, not like, uh, treating people in an ill manner. This is not what I'm saying. It's just you need to cut this stupid logic that comes from conventional wisdom, which is everyone like trying to mingle. You are being disagreeable and you are developing this habit of being disagreeable, even though that you are conveying the same type of body language when you're having a meeting. So when you are in a meeting and the person is like all over the place, you are all over the place as well. But that doesn't mean that you have to agree with them. See, and this is important because you are, if you do this consciously, if you're like addressing this, uh, you make making a point of like keeping your, your ground the way that you are, people will respect you more than if you try to be agreeable with them. Intelligent people, people that are confident, bar none, they are agreeable. It's actually on the contrary. They have, they hold their ground. They know what they're talking about. But they don't need to justify themselves. It's like the guy likes blue, the guy likes green. You should not be uh, put yourself in a position just because you are trying to communicate to justify why it is that you like blue. See? And this is what I wanted to share with you. So make a point of trying to see the things and situations that you are trying to be agreeable. Just, just try it. I'm telling you this because I'm doing this from experience. Like I said, I'm not a theory guy. I'm a practical guy. I live off commissions. And as you do this, you get better. And you notice different, a different type of pattern. 
It's like Einstein said, like, if you do things the same way right, and expect a different result, that's the definition of insanity. So just try it. Seriously, just go out with your friends and make it a point of being disagreeable, not being rude, not being impolite, and not saying that. It's just like, keep your ground. If they say, oh, all of us are going to take out the beers, and I don't like beer, I like milk. And then you shut up. See what I mean? So try to do this, hold your ground, be confident, believe in yourself. People start gravitating more towards you because they will see that you are serious about the way that you are. You are not changing things just because people are going to the left. You said you will be going to the right and that's what, exactly what you're doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.